Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and today I'm going to be reviewing a new product that really is one of those gadgets that to me is more interesting as a piece of technology or demonstration of technology and product design uh, than it is honestly something that the vast majority of you out there are in the market for. And that's because it's something that none of us have tried before, and that is a shoe with haptic feedback built into it. So these are the Drop Labs episode 01s or the EP01s and we'll call them Drop Labs. And it's from this new company that was founded by the ex-CEO of Beats uh, along with the inventor of this tech. And their goal is to allow you to basically feel music and sound and all type of auditory experiences uh, as a sensation through your feet. So those of you and us who love watching movies or listening to music, we understand that music and audio is, yes, primarily an auditory experience, but it's also a physiological one as well. Something that we can feel, whether we're going to a live concert or watching a movie in cinemas, you know, when you have the vibrations of those giant speakers and subwoofers, we can actually feel that. That is one part of the haptic sensation, the sensory experience of uh, music and movies and video games. And so Trap Labs wants to bring that into something that you can experience at home and also be mobile. And so they set out to build a shoe that has essentially a a subwoofer built into it and you know they've accomplished that so if you look at the form factor of the shoe here it is you know it looks like a typical sneaker we can also tell that there's a seam line here that's because in the sole here is basically all that technology they had this kind of constraint this limitation of designing something that we all are familiar with which is a sneaker a shoe but then packing in what you would need to have haptic feedback so underneath you can actually see this red circle represents where they have their tactile transducer their base shaker their subwoofer it's underneath here and then in the back uh, there you have the electronics, the sound processing, as well as a battery, a rechargeable battery. And then in the back of the shoe here, actually some controls and a charging port uh, as long, along with a, uh, a line in for a direct signal. And the user experience is interesting. So there is a, com a companion application that you download on your smartphone. And essentially, you tether your smartphone to the shoe as a Bluetooth device. And the shoe itself becomes an intermediary uh, for then your headphones or whatever uh, other speakers that you're using to listen to the actual, the high end and the, the mid ranges, uh, because what they're covering here is that low end. And so it's this kind of uh, tethered effect where you have music streaming on your phone or playing locally on whatever device you have, Bluetooth then to the shoe, and then that gets connected to some headphones Phones and you can also compensate for latency for Bluetooth latency, so you're matching up the responses between the shoe and the headphones as well. Uh, ergonomically, you know, I think they also accomplish for the most part a really comfortable shoe. Uh, it's really easy to slip on, you know, even though there is a lot of stuff on the bottom here, there's enough padding here where walking around my house and my backyard it feels comfortable. Um, right now, we're not really going outside, so I haven't taken this run. Uh, but this for me feels more like an indoor shoe, something that I would wear instead of slippers around the house. Um, and I kind of want to keep the bottom clean as well. It is uh, also heavier than your typical sneaker quite a bit. It's actually one pound eight ounces or so per shoe. And so by comparison, uh, um, one Blundstone, for example, um, is basically almost a pound, about 15 ounces. And so this is about eight or nine ounces over that. And um, that's 
not that big of a problem. You know, I don't feel like I'm dragging my feet around. And for the most part, I am using this while sitting at my desk or on the couch, uh, listening to music or watching movies. And that's the primary experience that they're selling this for. So uh, that's what I first testing was listening to a bunch of music. You know, could I be working and being productive on my computer while I have my headphones on? And then also having these shoes on, uh, what would that experience be like? And I really enjoyed that, you know, listening to music, um, you want to appreciate the full range of the sound experience. I have my own favorite headphones. I use uh, my uh, noise canceling Sony XM3s. Uh, pairing that with this shoe, great experience for completely wireless. My phone in my pocket, could be walking around my office, doing all sorts of stuff, um, and really feel uh, you know a more full body audio experience. Now, it's not going to be the same as going to a concert. I'm not going to feel the vibrations in my chest, uh, but I do feel them in my feet. And that is something that I didn't know I wanted at home listening to music while on headphones. Uh, sitting at my computer here, uh, my favorite head pair of headphones are um, their planar magnetic headphones. And so while they're really wonderful for the uh, high ends and clarity. They actually have very low bass response. And so pairing that with, um, you know, the tactile transducers, the low end that's brought in by these shoes actually made that a really nice complimentary experience. Um, movies, also something that I didn't expect to enjoy or didn't know what to expect. And I found myself really, really enjoying it as well. Uh, obviously, certain types of movies work a lot better. So something like 1917 or Bumblebee, movies that you're going to want to have a great bass experience. A lot of that sound design is does emphasize uh, the low end when you're watching a movie in theaters you're getting a lot more of that here. And it's not the same, of course, as going to Dolby Cinema or even with a really nice speaker setup in your living room. But it's it's so hard to explain because I am feeling more immersed in the movie. And it does feel like something that, you know, an hour into the movie, I'm not noticing. I'm just enjoying the experience. And after watching a couple movies and spending a couple days using this uh, with music and then not using it, it is something I feel like I'm missing. It's totally one of those pieces of technologies that, you know, I didn't know I wanted. And it's not like I can't live without it, but I do want to go back to it. It's not something that's been sitting in a drawer, sitting in the corner of my office. I am actually actively using it. Um, and you can use it for quite a while. Uh, the battery here lasts for about six hours, and that's going to depend on how powerful you adjust the uh, the feedback to be, the tactile feedback to be. Um, and on the strongest setting, it does reduce quite a bit, uh, maybe three to four hours. So I do have these kind of plus plugged in uh, via these magnetic chargers on both left and right shoe into the wall on a maybe a every other day basis. Now in terms of what that haptic feedback feels like, uh, this is in the realm of haptics, it's not force feedback, so I'm not getting active resistance uh, from the shoe. Physics just won't allow that, right? They had to design this where they're sending vibrations up uh, as well as, um, you know, accommodating for different kind of feet sizes where your arch is. And so it essentially, it is a, a compact subwoofer that they designed to put in here and you're getting uh, vibrations. And it is a localized experience, you know, where you can see this red circle. That is under the arch of your foot where you feel uh, vibrations. Now, of course, the amplitude can change and you feel, you know, there is a difference between a low vibration and a stronger thump. Um, but it's not, you know, the kind of very precise uh, linear resonant actuators that you get on something, you know, like the old the VR steam controllers or even on something like uh, your Apple Watch or the kind of HD haptics you feel on the Nintendo Switch controllers. Um, that's not that type of technology here. And part of that is because it's using essentially uh, digital sound processing on 
any type of sound input. You know, it's an analog input essentially that they're taking in digital over Bluetooth, but it's looking at that waveform. It's doing some analysis on that, essentially processing it, doing a, a low pass filter on it, adjusting the frequencies, and then turning that low end into their base response. And in the app, you can configure uh, different filter settings. And so they have uh, you know, recommendations for songs that are more lush or songs that um, are more on the high end. And so this is their equivalent of allowing you on a preamp to adjust the frequency for the low pass and the high cut, uh, which for other tactile transducers we've tested have been a separate configurable unit. That's something I wish they had here as a way to actually tune the filters, the, the presets here. I do notice a difference between them, but I would love a little more granularity in uh, tuning the feedback for my enjoyment. Now, uh, if you set to the maximum feedback, that's actually what they recommend for games. And that's another uh, place where this was a really interesting experience. So console games, you can also connect this to uh, the audio output of a gamepad. So they include this cable, uh, which is an analog cable, and it's a splitter, essentially. There's a separate splitter that you plug this into. Um, and so from your Xbox gamepad or your PS4, you would then have an output to your headphones, and then, or if you don't want, you can just go use your speakers. Uh, and then you plug this in, and it actually plugs into, via the same charging port um, the shoe as well uh, and there are some games where having this again it just increased a level of immersion in a way that I never knew I wanted so one of the games I played this with was Red Dead Redemption 2 and riding a horse galloping through a field the thump and the landing of the hooves that's something that I felt in the shoe. Uh, an interesting, really interesting experience was wading through like a creek or a river and uh, filtering through that audio. That's not something you think of as having a lot of low end and bass response, but there's some part of that audio mix that then gets transferred to the shoe and you feel a little bit of a tingling sensation as I'm walking through that river or that creek. Now, this isn't supposed to be a direct one-to-one -one representation of what it would feel like to ride a horse or wade through river. And, you know, haptics abstracts a lot of the signal. And here it's essentially, it's a dumb signal. It's just taking sound and processing sound uh, into uh, a sensation. But it's a cue, right? It's an audio cue that lets me connect what I'm seeing visually to some type of physiological experience, which enhances the immersion. And it was something that was really fascinating for video games. Now, because of the COVID lockdown, most of my testing of this so far has been indoors at home. I've done a little bit of walking outside in the street in my backyard, like I said, um, and I really don't know if this is something that needs to be taken outdoors, something you would necessarily ride on the bus or the subway or even go running with. Uh, certainly if you're gonna go running and you're gonna have your foot impact on the shoe as well, it might counteractive uh, to the sensations that it's trying to give you. And even if you're just sitting on the subway or something or a bus and wearing this, there is a little bit of sound pollution. Uh, as much of as they design this to send the, uh, the feedback and uh, the kind of haptic feedback upwards toward your foot, physics doesn't work that way. And you can hear it uh, if you're standing on a hardwood floor, someone and you're, you're wearing it, someone next to you or in your proximity, they'll be able to hear it. I mean, um, my housemates told me that I, it sounded like, uh, you know, the, the kind of effect that you would hear if your neighbors had their, their subwoofers blasting pretty loud. And that's what it felt like when I was in the same room with them. And there is definitely also uh, more travel between floors too. If you're on a second floor and someone's underneath, uh, they're gonna actually hear that uh, below the floor, depending on how your house is built. And so I've been using it really in indoors in my office and like I said, wearing it more like a uh, slipper, an indoor slipper uh, than an outdoor sports shoe.
The next place, of course, logically for me was to test this in a virtual reality setup. So once again, uh, for example, for on something like the Oculus Quest, uh, you would have to split the audio. So you take the audio output um, and you then, you know, thankfully on the Quest, there's actually two audio outputs. So you don't need to split that. Um, and you connect that cable uh, here and then the other end goes to the shoe. And this is one of the places where I also wish the cable was was longer. It's at 58 inches, under five feet. So from where the headset is to your feet, uh, it's a little bit constrictive. I had to use an extender cable, a 3.5 millimeter uh, extender to get it comfortable and you know use little clips, of course, so I'm not tangling myself, uh, myself up while playing. But games like Beat Saber and especially Pistol Whip worked really, really well with this shoe. And I could see, you know, again, developers don't need to specifically program or audio mix for this shoe, but I could see games where uh, if you're using a teleport locomotion technique where you're, you know, like in Half-Life Alex and you're warping from place to place, giving some type of audio cue that, so you can feel the quote unquote steps that you would have made through that teleport, or even with smooth locomotion as I'm, you know, floating around and drifting through the play area just using thumbsticks in VR, I want to maybe feel what it's like to have those footsteps. Again, it's not resistive feedback, but it's an audio cue and here a sensory cue that could let me know what I'm doing in that game and make it feel a little less floaty to be honest. Um, that's something I would love to see VR developers take advantage of, and I wanna see maybe ch try with more games to see if I can actually get that in the current sound mixes uh, for this shoe. Another reason I want that more granular control in the application. I also would love for it to be wireless, and I think they said um, they are working on some type of wireless dongle solution, so you can have audio output and then some type of connection to the shoe so you're not wirely tethered, but then they would have to solve uh, latency issues. And in VR, latency is a huge concern. Uh, disconnect between what you see and what you hear and what you feel. And so that direct connection is the most ideal right now. I also have another seated setup. So here the length of cable isn't a big issue uh, in a VR cockpit simulator that I'm building. And playing simulators like a space game, space sim, Elite Dangerous, or even uh, a game, a racing game, having the shoe, again, increases the sensation of being in that game. So um, whether it's Elite Dangerous where I'm in a spaceship and I want to feel the engines humming, when I increase the throttle, yes, I have my butt kicker transducer on the chair and I'm feeling the rumble on the seat, but I'm not feeling in my foot unless I'm putting these shoes on and having that more complete full body vibration and haptic feedback increases the immersion a ton. It's something that I really, really enjoy using in a VR simulator. And in a racing game, it's one of those cases. Again, if you're driving your car, you don't feel vibrational feedback on your foot with the pedals, right? You feel, you know, when you drive over gravel or driving over any type of speed bump, it, that's actual, um, that's that's resistive feedback, right? And short of having a full motion simulator that's gonna give you and, and kind of move your body around, uh, this becomes more, again, like an audio cue, but it's believable. It doesn't have to be realistic. Uh, it actually enhances the immersion still uh, in the same way that having the bass shaker tap into my audio uh, from a video game, from a racing game, and VR enhances that level of immersion. Here, again, it's a more full body experience. So really fascinating use cases for this. Not something that I would have thought I needed, but definitely something I am happy to be living with in my day-to-day -day enjoyment of music, movies, and VR. Uh, there's a lot I could see them doing and going with this technology um, in terms of maybe maybe more speakers in here. I want more uh, granularity in the types of feedback. Right now it's localized that one spot. Um, and I could also see a lot of businesses and industries maybe in the accessibility world um, tap into what it means to have 
tactile feedback um, in applications outside of entertainment. You know, when we all got uh, our watches, our smart watches with haptic feedback, we started using them to, for cues like navigation, right? One tap to turn left, two taps turn right, signals coming up. Like how could that be integrated with an app on your phone, Bluetooth tethered to a shoe to enhance the type of extrasensory uh, information that you would have this metadata layer over the real world um, as we move into augmented reality technologies and mixed reality technologies. Haptics are gonna be a big part of that. Um, this does feel very much like a first generation product and that's why it's for early adopters. Right? This is not cheap. It's $300 right now, uh, but the best thing I can say about it is it's not something that sits in the closet. It's not something that sits in a drawer. It is something I'm actively using on a regular basis and it's something, it's one of those delightful pieces of technology that I didn't know I wanted and I certainly don't need, but I now definitely want to be part of my office and home entertainment experience. So uh, it's if there's an opportunity once we get back into the world for you to try this out, I would encourage you to, to do so. Um, and uh, these are the Drop Labs episode ones. Uh, hope you found it interesting at least as a digest into haptics and uh, kind of what haptics can bring to home entertainment and VR. Uh, and we'll have more coverage of interesting tech like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Norm, and I'll see you next time. Bye.